Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our discussion about resonance. So now we're going to talk about another aspect of resonance. We've so far gone through these three examples shown here, and we've shown how to do them, basically, to show all the different resonance forms. But there's a little bit more that we can do with the resonance. So once we have the resonance forms available, we can figure out which is the most stable. That's going to be one of the most important things. So sometimes this is also listed as the most significant contributor to the resonance hybrid. But if you haven't gotten to hybrids yet, don't worry about that for right now. It means the same thing as which ones are the most stable. So we may have already started talking about how stable things are. Um, but just as a review or as the first time, if you haven't seen this yet, when we're talking about the different forms of molecules, there's a hierarchy of stability that we want to look at. And that's what we're going to talk about here. The first is the number one most important thing for a Lewis dot structure is that it's all octet. So if possible, the forms that are all octet are going to be more stable than any forms that are not octet. For example, if I show the structure shown here, I've got one here that has a carbocation and then the other one that has O+. Now, a carbocation only has six electrons, but a oxygen plus has eight electrons. It just has a different formal charge. So that means the one with the O plus would be better than the C plus because the O plus is all octet. Now, really, it doesn't have to be an octet in some cases, right? We said there are exceptions. So some exceptions can have fewer, like hydrogen, and some have more, like phosphorus and sulfur. So those exceptions are still allowed, but this is just saying if it's not meeting the, um, it's not a legitimate structure, then it's not as stable. Let's say you have a tie and all of your resonant structures are legitimate, or none of them are legitimate. For the example, if you have a carbocation, sometimes they just won't be legitimate, and that's okay. But if there's a tie, then the next thing you'd want to look at is the lowest formal charge. So if you have one resonance form that has no formal charges on any atoms and another one that has like a positive and negative, let's say, then that means the ones that are all zeros are going to be more stable than the ones that have a positive and a negative. The same thing would be true if you had um, something that had a form with a plus one charge or then another form that had a plus two formal charge. It would be better to have the form that only has a plus one as opposed to a plus two. Obviously, there'd have to be something to counteract that plus two so that everything evens out to the same overall charge, but bigger numbers are not as stable. Smaller numbers are better, and zero is the best formal charge. So moving on, if you've already established that everything has an octet, or is all not octet, it's all tied, and then you've already seen that the formal charges are all the same, there's a tie again, then the last thing you would consider is which one has the best electronegativity for the formal charges that you have. If you have a negative formal charge, then that would be more stable on a more electronegative atom. If you have a positive formal charge, then that's going to be more stable on a less electronegative atom. That's because more electronegative atoms like electrons more, and obviously negative charges have more electrons. So hopefully that makes sense stability-wise. Now, for an example, that would be saying if I had a negative on either an oxygen or a carbon, and those would both be octet, and those would both be the same formal charge, then I would pick the negative to be on the oxygen instead of on the carbon. Now is a good time to point out and remind everyone that this is a hierarchy. So if you look at example for number three, that's different than the example for number one. According to the example number three, it says that B is better because the negative's on the oxygen because it's more electronegative. But notice we went through all the other hierarchy first. So we already said it was all octet. That's true for A and B on the purple. That's the lowest formal charge. They're both negative one, so that's true for number two. And then we got to number three. If you look at the top example for number one in the red, that's a different example. If you look where the positive is, the best place for a positive would actually be A because it's on the carbon, which is less electronegative, not the B where it's on the oxygen. However, because they're not both octet, we would never even get there. So if you know they're not both all octet, you should never be looking at the electronegativity. So you can't just look at all three of these as equal. You have to really go in order to get the right answer sometimes. Now, before I go on, I'll mention that there's actually a fourth thing on this hierarchy of stability that's a special case. Um, we're not going to talk about right this second. We're actually going to talk about on the next slide. Um, but just know there is a special case. So if you get through all the way through one through three, there's one more you'll keep an eye out for. All right, so now that we've talked about the basics of figuring out the most stable version, then we're going to look at these examples. So just like we did before, let's actually start with number two, and then we'll come back to number one because it's a special case. So if we look at number two, we've got form A and B, and so we're going to go through our list. 
So the first thing on our list says, are these all octet? So if I look at structure A, are all the atoms octet? No, right? There's a carbocation, which means a, a plus carbon, and that only has six electrons. So that's not an octet. So let's look on the right side. So is B all octet? Yes, because nitrogen with a positive charge still has an octet. So that means we do not go any further down the list. So we're going to stop at all octet. And so which one's more stable? Right, it's going to be B. So we'll label this one as B. So we'll put a star. That's usually how we denote it. And then we'll say this is the more stable because it has all octet. That's why. You don't have to put the Y usually, but um, it's good for your notes especially to figure that out. All right, so for number three, um, it says we've got A and B. So for A, um, is it all octet? Yes, right? Because there's two lone pairs on those oxygens, that's all octet. For B, is it all octet? Yes, because the oxygen plus is still octet, and then a minus charge on a carbon is also all octet. So everything's all octet, so we're going to go down the next spot on the list. So remember the next spot on the list would be which one has lower formal charges. So we'll look and see what the formal charges are. So for A, what are the formal charges? Everything's zero, right? So if everything's zero, that's the most stable version. That looks great. So what about for B? There's a plus one and a minus one. So because those are higher numbers and there's a difference between A and B, that means we're actually going to pick which one is going to be the best. It's going to be A, right? Because it has lower formal charges, everything's zero, instead of B where there's some plus ones and minus ones. Okay, so we'll start A and then say that's because it has the lower formal charge. So now let's look at number one. It's a special case, so this one's going to be a little bit different, but that's okay. So if we look at this one, the very first thing, all these structures are the same in that they don't have an octet. So they all have a carbocation somewhere on them, so that's not octet. So they do not meet the first requirement, but they're tied, so we're going to keep going. So then do they have different formal charges? No, right? Every single form, A through E, has a positive one, and that's the same. So then we'll keep going down the list. The last one says, are there different electronegativities? So we only have to look at the, at the atoms with a positive charge, because if it doesn't have a charge, it doesn't matter. So they all seem to have a carbon positive charge, so all of those are the same. Now, we actually have a fourth thing on the list that I didn't add yet because we hadn't seen it yet. So the fourth thing on the list says that there's a special case for aromatics. If you have an aromatic, meaning this ring here, that with the six um, carbons, so a hexagon with three double bonds, that's actually more stable than if the double bonds are not in the ring. So in the ring is more stable than out of the ring for the double bonds. So that would mean that A and E are the most stable. And again, there's reasons why, which I can explain to you, um, but we just don't need to get into that right now. So if you have a question about that, just let me know and we'll talk about it. But generally, it's beyond the scope of this class. But that is more stable, so we're going to pick A and E as our most stable version. And they're tied because they're both, they both have an aromatic ring. So if they're tied, you can put two stars. There's not a rule that says you can only have one. So don't feel bad if there's a tie, just put two stars. Now, if there wasn't an aromatic and they were all the same and all three things were the same plus the aromatic part, then you can just start all of them if they're all the same. But usually there is one that's more stable. So hopefully that's helpful. So with that, we've covered all the major topics in resonance. So that's pretty much what you need to know for this course, but we're going to go into more detail, obviously, in class and looking at different examples. I'm sure you'll think of more stuff that you want to try when you're doing examples, but that covers all the theory that you need to know and all the processes that you'll want to do. So hopefully this makes sense. And I totally expect that you'll have lots of questions, so please ask whenever you have those. I'm happy to help. So you definitely want to try those activities as soon as you can, and hopefully let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.